Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. Really excited about this one because we are going to be looking at some really top-notch A-list performers, and we're gonna look at what they have to say about performance anxiety, if they've experienced it, if they haven't experienced it, and see if we can like glean some, some wisdom that we can take home as you know advice for us when we perform. And I wanted to give you the insight of you know, people who perform for a living as opposed to just my own ideas because I don't perform for a living. So I thought that would be the best starting point on a discussion that I've wanted to start with you guys for quite some time. Just a good, solid, introductory look at performance and performance anxiety. So before we start this video, I just want to let you know it's going to be a two-parter. So we are going to talk about 10 performers in these two series, so divide that by two. We're going to be talking about five performers in today's video, and then in the next one, we will discuss another five performers. So let's get started. Let's start this video off with Valentina Lisitsa, who is a Ukrainian-American performer born in 1973. She found fame mainly through her super popular YouTube channel uh, performance videos, so definitely check those out if you haven't already. Lisitsa is one of those people that exasperates me because she doesn't get performance anxiety. She would rather be performing than practicing, which she says in her own words, I like tremendously being on stage and performing for people. That's what I like. I didn't like the practicing part or the lessons part at all. Not at all very emphatic. So in her opinion, music that, that isn't performed and therefore isn't being communicated from one person to the other doesn't come fully alive. She also says that, I can tell you honestly, stage fright has never entered my mind. What does trouble me sometimes is overexcitement, which can affect everything from the way I come on stage and bow to my playing itself. I could talk of some anxiety perhaps, yes, but not stage fright. So perhaps Lisitsa isn't our teacher for conquering stage fright because she doesn't experience it, but she can give us some important insight as to why she doesn't feel anxious when she performs. And obviously part of that is probably she was just born that way. It seems that some people are. But I think another part of it is she she considers performing as simple and uncomplicated as having a conversation with a friend. She describes it in a way where she views it as communication. And she feels as though she has something to say that you, the audience, wants to hear. Next on the list is Evgeny Kissin, another young performer who was born in 1971. So he's Israeli, Russian, British, and he originates from the Russian piano school. And like Lisita, Kissin was practically born to perform and doesn't really talk about having any anxiety. When he was younger, he said he spent some time composing music, but eventually he felt that he had nothing more to say with it. So instead, he became more involved in performing because he felt it was something that was a better vessel for his creative energies. When reflecting on his first performance at age 11, Kissin says, I had such a feeling of relief. During intermission, I was impatient to return to the stage. My teacher had said that there is good nervousness and bad nervousness. If you are not prepared, that's bad nervousness. But I think I only felt excitement and pleasure. In fact, he loves performing so much that he often puts extra seats around the stage so more people can watch him play. And about that, Kissin says, it's strange, but the more people who are there in the hall, the better I play. It's necessary for me to play a piece in public to master it. The whole perception changes. I feel people's attentiveness and my performance depends on it. In, in addition to his love of performing and just kind of like overall general fearlessness, Kissin is also one of those like note perfect performers who very seldom makes technical mistakes. So what can we learn from him? Well, like Lasita, it seems that communication is the number one reason that it, it seems so natural and easy for him to perform because it seems to be his number one way to communicate. And interestingly, he's kind of a, he's a man of few words. He's not a very social person and he even has a little bit of a speech impediment. So he, it probably is literally the easiest way for him to communicate through music. In the same way that a writer is most comfortable communicating with words or a painter is most comfortable communicating with paint and so on. It's just his, his most natural and easy way to get across something. 
from himself to you. Next up is the esteemed Arthur Rubinstein, who was a Polish-American performer living from 1887 to 1982, so good long life. His performance career spanned eight decades. He basically played from, you know, right up until he died. Um, But despite having such a long performing career, he did experience significant anxiety, most notably just in the minutes leading up to a performance. So, for example, he would get anxious in the cab ride to the concert, worrying that he'd have memory lapses or that he would like embarrass himself. Oftentimes what he'd do to avoid that is he would arrive at the hall right before the concert started so he wouldn't have to spend time backstage just kind of like freaking out. Rubenstein did accept his own fears. He basically called them the price he pays for his wonderful life. Rubenstein wasn't a note perfect performer like Kissin, but he explains how that isn't the point. In response to a student's fears on hitting wrong notes while performing, he said in response that, I have reached the age where I don't worry so much about the wrong notes, but I am very concerned about the music that comes between them. His advice for a great performance is eloquent and insightful and even a little, little steamy. He says, at every concert, I leave a lot to the moment. I must have the unexpected, the unforeseen. I want to risk to dare. I want to be surprised by what comes out. I want to enjoy it more than the audience. That way the music can bloom anew. It's like making love. The act is always the same, but each time it's different. Rubenstein, like many of the great performers, demonstrates a deep bravery when he's on stage. He takes risks, and because of that, he's able to be fully in the moment. So this is an extremely difficult thing to do when you're a performer, especially an amateur performer, because the tendency is to just kind of like lock up within yourself when you get on that stage. I see it happen all the time. It happens to me because when we're on that stage, we're allowing ourselves to be open and vulnerable, which is super, super scary. And, you know, we fear judgment and all those things. But Rubenstein reminds us that it's okay to feel that fear, but we have to move past it. We have to move past it instead of just hiding inside of ourselves. We need to, we need to be open and be brave in order to have a truly satisfying performance experience. Next on our list is Martha Argerich, who is a supreme Argentinian performer born in 1941. So like Rubenstein, she's also suffered from performance anxiety throughout her life. And what she's kind of infamous for is canceling concerts. But I don't know that that's so much anxiety, but just more because she actually kind of hates having a long-term schedule. Um, so I don't think it's like necessarily a stage fright thing. So for example, like one time when she was 17, she cut one of her fingers just so she could get out of playing a concert. But actually there were some performers on this list who actually benefited from Martha's tendency to cancel like Kissin and Wang. She would ask them to fill in for her and that gave them the opportunity to perform on big stages. Martha definitely dislikes solo performing and she would much rather perform in a group like with a concerto or chamber music. She explains it as being a lonely experience, but I I think fright probably plays into it as well. She's quoted as saying that audiences are not important for me now, and they never were, which is basically the opposite sentiments of someone like Kissin or Lisitsa. My big takeaway from Argerich's performance style is that it's okay to be different. It's okay to defy convention. And one example of this is how she's often, like, she's a very powerful playing style, and so she's often called manly in her performance style, which, you know, many women can find really irksome because, you know, why can't you be a powerful performer while also not being manly? But she also follows like a pretty untraditional schedule with like sleeping until the afternoon and playing music late at night. As we already talked about, she's kind of prone to going on her own schedule and canceling performances and performing doesn't define her entire life and it's not even necessarily like performing is about communication like as with Lisitsa or Kissin for for her music is for her so she plays music for herself. So last on today's list, we have Vladimir Horowitz, who is basically the classic example of a performer with extreme stage fright. He was a Russian-American musician who lived from 1903 to 1989. Apparently, he sometimes grew so anxious about a performance that he would have to be like literally pushed on stage for him to, to go up. And he would, you know, go on long periods of time where he would stop performing entirely. He kinda he kinda disappeared from the public eye twice. So he retired 
once very early and then he kind of went back to it but then he retired again permanently some of the things he experienced before performance would be everything from like you know painful stomach convulsions all the way to excruciating mental anguish so any of us who've dealt with you know, performance anxiety, kind of can understand where he's coming from on that one. Since he never really conquered his nerves, we can't really learn that aspect from him. He doesn't really have anything to teach us about conquering anxiety. But despite his anxiety, he was a brilliant performer. So there are things we can learn from his performing style. So that's a little bit of a dive into our first five performers uh, when we're talking about performing and anxiety and things like that. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you're looking forward to the second part. I am. They are a lot of fun to do. These were a lot of fun to research too. I kind of felt like a, like a journalist. I'm not a journalist. I'm probably not a very good one either. So you guys can catch up with me on social media. I exist on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and also Patreon, where we do little goodies like you know PDFs of the blog and audio recordings, so you can like listen to these videos as a podcast and little perks like that. Monthly videos, behind the scenes stuff. So if you haven't already, come check us out on Patreon. It's Patreon dot com slash piano tv all right and i will catch you guys in part two born in 1973 she found fame mainly through her really popular oh that's not it